Hello everyone, my name is Bleach Dairy, and thank you so much for joining me today. Over the many years that I've been listening to metal, I believe I've managed to listen to pretty much every subgenre. Whether it's mainline genres like doom metal and thrash metal, to fan-made or smaller subgenres like pirate metal and gore grind. Though with all the different types of metal out there, the one I've always been the most infatuated with is black metal. Black metal just has an abhorrently evil sound to it that's very prevalent in bands like Mayhem and Emperor, as well as being a rebellion against the music industry and mainstream death metal, most notably in the second wave. Not to mention all the history that surrounds the genre, which I find to be absolutely fascinating. And as with the other main subgenres of metal, more subgenres and fusions would start to derive from those subgenres. For black metal, this would include ambient black metal, atmospheric black metal, black and death, black and thrash, black and roll, black gaze, post black metal, and unblack metal, just to name a few. But the one I want to talk about specifically is depressive suicidal black metal, or DSBM for short. Depressive suicidal black metal, also shortened to just depressive black metal, is a genre derived from black metal that focuses not on evil and satanic imagery like traditional black metal, rather it builds up an atmosphere that is melancholic and depressing. This is achieved by using a lot of repetition between instruments, as going the opposite way from traditional black metal and using a lot more melody, giving off different emotions like sadness, anger, and despair. The vocals are generally less of high-pitched screams, but more like shrieks and wails in a sense of the vocalist sounding like they're suffering. And the lyrics are generally themed around topics such as depression, suicide, self-harm, self-hatred, misanthropy, and many others. So with all that being said, if this is a genre that you wish to dive into for whatever reason it may be, then allow me to recommend some bands and albums to get you started, as well as give some of my experience with the genre. Silencer, Death Pierce Me. I first became aware of this genre when I was doing research and finding disturbing songs, which led me to a list of what I was exactly looking for with songs like Daddy by Korn and Hamburger Lady by Throbbing Gristle. But one song on that list stood out to me the most, and that was from the album Death Pierce Me by Silencer. Of course, I took a listen to the song, which was the title track of the album, and it was honestly a very uncomfortable listen at first. Now mind you, I have heard a good amount of black metal prior to this, but I had never heard anything like this. The shrieks from the vocalist named Natram very much had me spooked. and the raw repetition of the guitars and drums certainly helped with that. But that was just the tip of what I was about to find in this album. This album basically has melancholy written all over it. You may find me using that word a lot, because it really does describe the entire genre as a whole. A lot of people don't really care for Natram's vocals, which, if you're not used to them, you may find them to be more silly and almost comedic. And I will say that it's something to get used to, but I think it really adds to the whole despair vibe sometimes even angry with songs like Taklamakin and Slow Kill in the Cold. But still keeping a sorrow sound, especially in Sterile Nails and Thunderballs. It truly is a very well-put-together, well-performed, extremely dark album that definitely deserves praise. It's also notable that Natram was in fact a very mentally unstable person, so much so that he appointed himself to a mental hospital, thus having to break ties with his fellow bandmate Lire, and ending Silencer not long after Death Pierce Me was released in 2001. There's also a lot of rumors and misinformation about Natram, but that deserves an entire video in of itself. Overall, Silencer's Death Pierce Me is truly a very dark experience, and I think it's a great way to start off your journey through DSBM. Thy Light, Suicide Depression. Now don't let the cliché title fool you, because this album is so much more than that. Thy Light was formed in 2005 in Brazil, PLEASE COME TO BRAZIL! by Paulo Bruno on all instruments and vocals, and Alex Witchfinder writing the lyrics. This is one band that is more along the lines of depressive black metal, because themes of suicide aren't as prevalent in their work, there are still themes of suicide in this album, but just not as much as others. Their lyrics are more about nostalgia, philosophy, and sadness. 
Suicide Depression is actually a demo rather than a full-fledged album with only five songs. But after hearing this demo so many times, it's honestly one of the most beautifully dark things I've ever heard. The first song, Suicide Depression, Introduction to My End, is a short piano track that is just absolutely beautiful. It's almost gothic in a sense, and I think that's how I would describe this entire demo as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Thy Light had some gothic influence in their music. Then there's the song In My Last Morning, where it starts out with these beautiful melodic guitar riffs. Before changing to distortion and some of my favorite black metal vocals ever. And the solo at the end, it's just completely breathtaking. As depressing as the demo sounds, it's written and performed in such a beautiful way that it almost cheers me up when I hear it. That's the best word that I can describe this album. Beautiful. Thy Light has also released a full-length album in 2013 titled No Morrow Shall Dawn, and a self-titled EP in 2021. But honestly, I think Suicide Depression is one of my absolute favorite DSBM albums and quite possibly one of my favorite black metal albums ever. Maybe it seems like I'm hyping this album up too much, but I encourage you to take a listen and form your own opinion. Psychonaut 4, Dipsomania. Psychonaut 4 started in 2010 in the country of Georgia, and they've had many different releases, mostly splits with different bands like Nocturnal Depression and Happy Days. For some context for their name, a psychonaut is a person who deeply explores their own mind generally through the use of drugs, and the four is the number of plateaus in the drug dextrom- the what the fuck? Dextromethorf- Dextromethorphan. Look, I don't know anything about drugs, so that's a- that's a new word for me. Just as the name suggests, this album, Dipsomania, which is a more harsh definition of alcohol use disorder, is about depression from alcoholism and drug abuse. This album definitely follows with more rock elements and is even described as depressive rock. To me, every song is different in terms of emotion. Don't Leave the Room is like a feeling of loneliness, Personal Forest is like a feeling of temporary solace, Moldy is like a feeling of being completely numb, and alcoholism is, well, exactly as the title suggests. Throughout its one hour and seven minute length, Dipsomania will leave you feeling every bad emotion that you can think of, all from the pain-filled vocals, heavily distorted guitars, and rock-style drums. And that one part in Suicide is Legal, where it goes That part just, it just gets me every time. Psychonaut 4 is an incredible band with a pretty good list of releases, and Dipsomania is definitely one of the best albums to come out of the genre. Anti, the insignificance of life. Anti was formed in 2003 in Germany and released the insignificance of life in 2006. I would say that the best word to describe this album is wicked. The guitars follow more traditional black metal riffs while still keeping a level of melody, the drums are unrelenting and in-your-face, especially with very fast double bass, and the vocals are also very unique. They're like these distorted, echoey, high growls that sound like they're being shredded up. It's really weird, but it also fits the vibe of the album. This album has a more, as I've said, wicked feeling, as well as a doom kind of feeling. Kind of like you're constantly falling down a dark hole with no way of stopping yourself. The lyrical themes mostly revolve around suicide, even with the song Perished, starting out immediately with someone cocking a gun and shooting themselves. and it happens again halfway through the song. The best way to listen to this album, I would say, is during a rainy dusk, 
all the lights off, staring out the window, just thinking about life and the world and all that stuff. It's a sad, doomy album that I would very much recommend, and if you're going to check this one out, I'd recommend you check out a YouTube channel called Black Metal Promotion. Their upload of The Insignificance of Life is the 2010 reissue that features four extra songs. All of them are very much a must-listen. Abyssic Hate – Suicidal Emotions Abyssic Hate is a one-man project started by Shane Root, who has been a part of multiple other bands like Destroyer 666. The project was formed in 1993, and the name was taken from the Dark Throne song In the Shadow of the Horns, which is actually my all-time favorite Dark Throne song. Suicidal Motions is Abyssic Hate's only full-length album released in 2000, with only four songs on the album. But my god, this album is a dark one. With the albums that I've talked about previously, they sort of like to build up into the emotion that they want to convey in their album or in their songs. However, with this one, there is no build-up. It just hits you right away with its depressing and hateful atmosphere. Now from listening to this album multiple times, I personally have a feeling that this album has taken some inspiration from Burzum's Philosophem, mostly from the sound and atmosphere. The production is very much lo-fi, which makes the guitars sound very fuzzy, and there's a lot of very long repetition with the riffs, which reminds me a lot of Philosophem. Can I confirm this? No. I'm only making a comparison based off of what I'm hearing. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was some Burzum inspiration in this album. This album is less about sadness and more about hatred. Hatred towards yourself, hatred towards others, hatred towards the world. It's a very hate-driven album, and it fits considering the band name. It's a kind of dark atmosphere that just screams, I'm cold and alone, and yet it has a sense of beauty to it. I feel like this album is a perfect example of the DSBM genre as a whole. Dark, depressing, melancholy, but with a sense of beauty to it. This is definitely a must-listen if you want to know more about DSBM, so I would highly recommend Suicidal Emotions, no question about it. There are a lot of other albums that I could recommend for a number of different bands like Shining, Leviathan, Zaster, Life Lover, Make a Change Kill Yourself, etc. But I think these are a good place to get you started with a wide array of sounds, emotions, and popularity. I guess it's no surprise that I've taken a massive interest in this genre, so why is that? I can't speak for everyone, but being a person who suffers from depression, I like to look towards art that conveys the emotion that I'm feeling. I know that people say not to do that because they think it makes it worse, but when I listen to albums like Suicide Depression and Dipsomania, I find it to be comforting. It makes me feel better knowing that I'm not the only person who feels this way. I've had plenty of times when I've felt like absolute shit and completely lacking of any motivation, and I would always think it would be much easier to just disappear. But I would put on a DSBM album or a playlist, and I would just get so enthralled in the music that I would feel just better enough to keep on moving. It's a genre that even though it's dark, sad, and hateful and melancholic, it makes me happy. Another thing I love about it is that most of the bands in this genre, they don't do it for profit, they don't do it for popularity, they don't do it to make a statement or to cater to an audience, they do it to turn their negative emotions into art, which I think is a very cathartic way of dealing with those emotions. There's a quote by Caesar A. Cruz that I very much believe in, and it's, Art should comfort the disturbed, and disturb the comfortable. Where a normal person might hear this music and push it away because it makes them uncomfortable, there's people like me who hear it and see the beauty in it. And I couldn't think of a better genre to fit this quote than depressive suicidal black metal. Well, maybe noise music and power electronics, but that would also make for a different video. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for me, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.